Thank you. Um, so what I'm doing now <laughs> is to, um, so this is something I guess, uh, um, what I'm specifically doing now is something that I started doing last semester, right? Almost right after um, the popularity of ChatGPT and stuff exploded. And actually, when I was first doing it last semester, a lot of what I saw was ChatGPT was, uh, you know, B minus a student. It got a lot of easy questions, right? But any challenging questions, it would miss. And um, my main interest in continuing to do this was. Um, kind of to keep up with what's the state of the art with the generative AI. And here, uh, I have a paid account with the Perplexity where I can use Copilot quite a bit. And I'll be using GPT-4, so this is the best uh, model out there now. And what I've seen so far with my other class is it's pretty good. It's gotten most of the questions right. So I want to see how well it continues to do so that I can keep up with um, how good generative AI is. And one thing that I will share is that um, if uh, ever generative AI becomes a, a more of a learning tool than a cheating tool, I frankly don't have any objection to, for, to you using a tool that helps you learn. If something helps you learn physics, great. Use it. I have no objection. Uh, I only had develop objection when people start to use it as a way to cut corners and use it as a cheating tool. And it's uh, I guess at some point it might be a uh, uh, playing the role of a really high quality tutor that um, anyone <laughs> with a, uh, twenty bucks per month can access. Um, uh, you know, a, a tutor, especially an unethical tutor, might just give you the answers. Uh, rich people always have that kind of access, and. Uh, Generative AI not having any ethics <laughs> might just give you answers, which um, you might misuse, but I really recom strongly recommend that you don't because it won't help you learn physics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask uh, ChatGPT or GPT through perplexity. I'm going to ask it these questions one at a time, and I'll comment on the answers that I get, see if, it, if it's correct or not, um, or where I might quibble with at some point. We'll see. So give one example of physical property. Um, yeah, and one thing I do like about perplexity is it has access to web. It has much lower incidence of um, uh, hallucination. I've um, I haven't actually seen the perplexity hallucinate all that much. Uh, it, in the sense that it doesn't give you some it, some like a made up fact. It doesn't do that the way ChatGPT might. So, in response to the question, it says an example is a volume of a liquid. Yeah, I think I've seen a lot of the answer when I was creating. Uh, yeah, common alcohol and mercury thermometers. Yeah, and uh, I can actually ask a follow up question Can you give me three other examples? And because, uh, you know, a lot of people might be giving this answer. So, or, you know, if that's something that you already knew and you are curious, um, what else might change? So volume, I don't care. Pressure, maybe. OK. Electrical resistance. I think your textbook actually has that. Um, a, thermo, so a device called the thermocouple, uh, which is the basis of um, therm, uh, like the temperature probes you might use in chemistry lab. It uses that thermocouple effect. Um, or uh, it could use thermocouple effect. There's also a, a change of the resistance, which is different from thermocouple. Um, so, yeah, pressure of gas, yeah, directly proportional, and volume and number is kept constant. So this, yeah, I don't know if I know any examples of that, but that, you, that can certainly be used. And it's quite um, on topic with the, the rest of the class topic about thermodynamics. Electrical resistance, yeah, yeah. So this is one, um, and so the, I know some cryostats that use this for lower temperature, um, and um, yeah, and thermal expansion, which is actually volume expansion. Another one. Uh, let me see if you can give me another example. Uh, can you give me two more examples? At some point, uh, <laughs> yeah, thermocouple, that's another one. That's actually a quite common effect uh, that's used to, to measure temperature. Uh, I might have mentioned the thermocouple in the model answer. I don't remember. Uh, and yeah, this I'm pretty sure is in your textbook, uh, which is another volume expansion, but it's a particular um, application of that thermal expansion coefficient. So yeah. Um, 
Okay, let me keep going with the next question. So, you know, first question, the first answer he gave, it's a nice, good default question, default answer. And if you get a sense, oh, that's too common of an answer, then nothing uh, stops you from <laughs> asking uh, follow-up questions to try to get a, um, uh, you know, learn about things that you might not have known. So for this uh, invar question, I'm pretty sure it uh, can go quite a bit. Yeah, nickel alloy 36 is no, no, no. Yeah, it's minimal thermal expansion composed of that uh, to, to the invar effect. <laughs> now you might note that none of this actually explains how it works and. In the model answer, I do remember reading it. Um, it's a trick question because <laughs> we don't really understand it. But the fact that we don't understand how it works in terms of the material science doesn't prevent us from using it. So, uh, it in, especially in like uh, experimental science, people use this when uh, they want to make sure some uh, some experimental apparatus which can be made of you know nickel and iron. Uh, they want to make sure it doesn't change. Uh, uh, dimensions too much, uh, invar is a, a good way to do it, a uh, good expensive way to do it. <laughs> Let me go to the next question. Pressure cooker, yeah. I wonder if we don't mention va saturated vapor pressure, because that's the one part that I didn't really see in student answers. You know, why does the boiling point of water change when pressure is greater? Uh, pressure cooker increase the cooking speed by raising, boil. yeah, that's good. First sentence. Forms a steam, can I escape with pressure? The boiling point of dependent on surrounding pressure. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I think I've seen a lot of that. So, it didn't quite get to the point that I was hoping it would get to. Let me see if I can ask a follow up question. How or why does the boiling point of a liquid is. Um, the liquid depend on the surrounding pressure. Uh, you might remember from your chemistry class uh, talking about the definition of uh, boiling when the uh, vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the ambient pressure. Uh, because liquid boils when it's a vapor pressure equals the pressure of the gas above it. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Good. All right, let me copy the next question. Uh, how does the latent, oh, it's still answering? Yeah, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> how does the latent heat of fusion of water slow decrease? Okay, uh, about the microclimate, of the kind that we are happy to experience in the Bay Area, especially in Oakland, and uh, not through the Caldeco Tunnel. <laughs> Um, Oakland and uh, Alameda. I keep forgetting. Uh, I live in Oakland. I work in Alameda. <laughs> uh, latent heat of fusion of water helps to slow the decrease of air temperature by releasing a significant right, during the phase change from liquid to solid. And uh, this is kind of a um, counterintuitive statement, which um, I hope once you understand, it will make sense. Freezing is a warming process. It's counterintuitive because, you know, people associate freezing with cold, you know, freezing. <laughs> but uh, when the phase change occurs fr from liquid to solid, in order to do that, the material has to release the heat. So the process of water freezing, it's a warming process for the surrounding where the heat will be going. So as the uh, it begins to freeze and latent heat of fusion is released into surrounding area. Have a high, and so that's a one point, and this is a separate point. The high heat capacity, water has an unusually high heat capacity. I don't think there's any other material, any other common material that has the heat capacity as high as water. So water can act as a, like a, a ballast that keeps the temperature stable even without freezing or boiling. Um, so that's this is a second separate point, which you know is not really about latent heat of fusion, but. It's it's correct a statement. Uh, so let me ask you this question: Does the second point have anything to do with the latent heat of fusion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. Yeah. 
so I, I, I do think uh, it might already be there with the uh, GPT-4, uh, where it is actually a good learning tool. Where if, if you are thinking through the response and asking follow-up questions, it actually does answer well. You can almost... Uh, uh, let me see if... Uh, so most of the images... Uh, let me do it this way. So I'm going to copy image and paste. I think. Uh, no. um, so it should have some uh, accessibility feature. How do I do it this way? Let me see if this will work. Yeah, okay. So this is the... Um, a description of the image. And uh, let me do it this way. Shown on the right, description is below. Description of uh, is below. Is a cutaway drawing of thermal spottle, uh, which is the way on the function. Figure shows, okay. Then that. And uh, it should... Uh, uh, parts that so uh, vacuum, silver the walls. Um, I think everything. The wall, the upper support, air layer, and the stopper. It should uh, talk about the three different mechanisms. Oh well, uh, all of them. Hmm. <laughs> Um, it should uh, talk about the three uh, different mechanisms of heat transfer, and each of these points should refer to how that particular mechanism of heat transfer is prevented. So uh, with the vacuum, heat transfer through conduction and convection is prevented, good. Uh, with the silver, the walls, uh, heat transfer through radiation is prevented. Silvering uh, reduces the emissivity of the material. Uh, if a black body has one, like a well silvered wall might have like 0 0.01, a much lower emissivity, meaning radiative uh, cooling is less, or radiative heating is also less. Um, uh, reflect, sure, you can per, uh, describe it that way. Thin walled long glass neck, um, that would uh, reduce conduction, uh, yeah, area, the cross sectional area through which it can be transferred, yeah, minimizing conduction. Uh, long neck access with the same convection. Uh, maybe I, uh, I guess you know this way. Sure, uh, when the the stopper is uh, off, rubber support uh, down here used to suspend, providing stability. Heat transfer. Yeah, this rubber has poor heat conductivity. Uh, I don't know if it helps maintain the vacuum, unless you are worried about the glass breaking. Maybe I guess you might worry about. Uh, this portion kind of coming loose and letting air in. Um, I, let me ask, how does rubber support help maintain vacuum? Uh, air layer. Uh, oh, I see. There's a vacuum layer and then air layer. Uh, inner and outer walls. And, and, and conduction. Convection, huh, maybe. Um, if uh, I think these layers are thin, or not, thin enough, the convection, might, convection current might be pre prevented as well. Um, the stopper is used to seal, preventing air from entering. Main, it doesn't help maintain the vacuum between the walls. <laughs> so let me ask, um, uh, how does the rubber support and the stopper help maintain the vacuum uh, between the walls? It's rubber support, I can imagine a rational. The stopper does nothing. No. All right. It's uh, sometimes um, AI can be really timid, um, even though there might have been an actual reason for that for the rubber support, but just backs off. Uh, I, I don't know. Not being a, ther a thermos expert, I don't know how correct <laughs> AI was to immediately back off like this, rather than giving a reason why how rubber support would help maintain vacuum. Um, I, I, one would have to be a thermos expert to know the correct answer, and I'm not a thermos expert. Uh, a lot, of, it's like a lot of engineering topics. There are uh, topics that I frankly don't know without looking up or further studying because I'm a physicist, not an engineer. Okay, I have the question. Let me um, ask.
the fact that I can continue to speak to the problem because you can listen. Kinetic energy and kinetic energy is temperature, um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> While the rest goes to the other degrees of freedom, right? Vibrational and rotational. So, uh, rotational degree of freedom is already accounted for here. The reason this is not seven half uh, kb is because the vibrational degree has been frozen out uh, at normal room temperature. Do the same. Uh, I guess it's correct enough. It's a little bit lengthy, um, but then maybe the it increase or decrease the space capacity. Did it answer that? Um, increase the specific capacity. All right. So it answered the question. There's some explanation that's kind of worthy. I think it's fine. Um, um, uh, maybe uh, let me. Can you explain why the specific Heat capacity per molecule of a diatomic gas is not 7 kb over 2. I wonder if it will bring up the whole frozen out idea. I think all of them. Why not? Yeah, yeah, the vibrational degrees of freedom have been frozen out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah the rest of the answers will probably be correct. So let me, you know, scroll enough so that people see it, and I'll prepare for the, uh, actually, actually, sorry, for editing purposes, I'll just stay here until it finishes answering. Because I want to be, have, um, yeah, so, yeah, it, um, and I think they teach you in chemistry about the degrees of freedom of freezing out. I remember learning that in high school chemistry, I think. Uh, I, or maybe it's physics. Sometimes these things kind of blend together. I don't remember from what context I learned the specific facts. I just know what's correct. <laughs> so.